Starlink destroys the night sky. Starlink sparks uproar amongst astronomy enthusiasts as it will raise the level of light pollution coming from above. Yeah, apparently that's the thing now. Satellites have been around for a long time now. Back in the late 50s, the space race had its first real breaking news with a little metal ball floating above our heads. Sputnik, launched from Baikonur in the former Soviet Union, was admired. People looked upon that little artificial star and were amazed. It even made it onto a stamp. Satellites changed the world in a way people could have hardly imagined watching Sputnik fly by. Suddenly, things were possible people could have only dreamed of only years earlier. Global communication, accurate weather reports, science, exploration of the solar system. All these things can be tracked back to that one little metal star that once amazed us. First, launches were few and far apart, but that was soon to change. Satellites could do the impossible. Every powerful nation in the world wanted their fleet of little metal helpers in the sky. As with many new technologies, the military had its first big share. Eyes in the sky. Pictures of Nikita Khrushchev in his swimming pool? No problem if you're in the satellite business. Projects like the CIA-driven Corona reconnaissance satellites changed the world forever. The commercial sector followed soon after with weather and communication satellites. Soon, a global market for satellites was established, served by the ever-growing launch industry. But with most good things come the problems. On average, up until the year 2017, humanity has launched 143 satellites up into space each year. That's a total of 8,593, and from there on, it got even crazier. 2018 saw a huge increase in launch activity. The second space race has begun and is fully underway. In 2018, we saw a global launch activity increase compared to 2017 of 25%. And 2019 is already shaping up to top the last year. It's safe to say that satellites are here to stay. Pun intended. For real though, satellites are here to stay. For a long time. They clutter up the night sky and fill the orbit with all sorts of junk. They endanger other satellites and even the ISS. They make the orbit around the Earth dangerous and unpredictable. Also, they disturb pictures taken by telescopes. Many astronomers, amateurs and professionals alike know this problem. Right now, this problem is small but annoying, but soon there could be DEFCON 5 for every telescope around the globe. Remember the official press release from the last video? That's not a printing error. Starlink will be made up of 12,000 satellites when it's finished and they will be in low Earth orbit. Most satellites for communications are in a high altitude geostationary orbit. That's 35,786 kilometers above the planet. Satellites at this height are normally very faint. The light that gets reflected from their surfaces and solar panels gets scattered and uh, is barely visible to the naked eye from the ground. Low Earth orbit, or LEO, on the other hand, is an orbit that is 500 to 2000 kilometers above ground. Much closer to the ground, satellites at this orbit are sometimes even visible to the naked eye. The ISS, for example, also in a low Earth orbit, can clearly be seen with the naked eye in the night sky. Picture this. What you see in this video are the 60 satellites recently launched by SpaceX in a single launch. Fun fact, that is 42% of the annual amount of inserted satellites into Earth orbit. Up till 2017. Now imagine 12,000 of those little satellites swirling around the globe. That is so many of them that at any point, anywhere on the planet, you will have some of them visible in the night sky. And that's the goal of the whole mission. To have a satellite visible anytime, anywhere. Global communication. These satellites operate with line of sight. And that's only from one satellite constellation in low Earth orbit, Starlink. There are several in the works from other companies right now. Welcome at the base of the argument. You've made it so far. Well done. But what about it? Is there anything to it? Will we soon see more Starlink satellites than stars in the night sky? Honestly, it's hard to tell at the moment. Recent sightings of the Starlink satellites have been made while they were in a temporary lower orbit of around 440 kilometers above the ground. Right now, the satellites are pushing up using their hull thrusters, also known as Krypton thrusters because they use Krypton gas as their reaction mass, 
to raise their orbit up to 550 kilometers above the ground. This will most likely diminish most of the shine early observers were able to see from the ground. Only in a few weeks or even months we will be able to see how much that reduction actually is and if the Starlink satellites really vanish from the night sky. Even though if the slightest glimmer remains, that will be enough if it's 12,000 satellites cluttering up the night sky. Another question that needs to be answered is the junk. But what about it? Will the Starlink satellites clutter up our precious orbits or even crash into other satellites or possibly the ISS? Originally planned was a much higher orbit of 1150 kilometers above ground. Last year though, SpaceX requested permission from the Federal Communications Commission, also known as FCC, to operate the satellites at a much lower orbit. This in part is due to lower latency for the later to be established communications network, because if the satellite is closer to Earth, latency is lower. Also though, it's to make sure that the satellites don't stay in orbit for much longer after their life has ended. A satellite's life normally ends when it runs out of propulsion. Due to atmospheric drag that exists even in orbit, a satellite normally has to push up a little bit using its thrusters to raise its orbit from time to time. Remember the Hull effect thrusters mentioned earlier? Even though this is a very effective thruster method, after a while it runs out of fuel and then it starts to decelerate. In orbit, deceleration means loss of altitude as the orbit slowly begins to creep towards the planet. In the end, it touches the atmosphere and begins to burn up in a sometimes pretty spectacular way. In short, decommissioned satellites are a problem in a higher orbit. At geostationary orbit, there's even a parking orbit called graveyard orbit. A graveyard orbit, also called junk orbit or disposal orbit, is an orbit that lies away from the normal operational orbit of the satellites. As a satellite would stay in geo orbit for hundreds or even thousands of years after its life has ended, these satellites have to be moved to that different orbit to keep geo orbit clear for new satellites. Anybody know the movie Spaceballs? This lady might be the solution for all of our problems. But what seems to be an ever-growing problem in geostationary orbit isn't really much of a problem at a height of 550 kilometers. The official requirement from the FCC for a low Earth orbit satellite is to deorbit within 25 years after its operational life has ended. Most LEO satellites though deorbit much quicker and at a height of 550 kilometers, well, when they run out of propellant, they will probably last only a few years. But what about it? Is there an even better way? Yes, there is. In fact, there are several. A paper released by NASA explains several different ways that can roughly be divided into two different methods, controlled and uncontrolled deorbit. For example, solar sails are a very interesting way to deorbit a satellite after its lifespan has ended. Maybe Elon should talk to the Planetary Society. They might be able to help. But Starlink satellites, of course, have their own way of deorbiting, a controlled one. They use their Hull effect thrusters at the end of their life to give them that little push needed for deceleration to make them plummet down to the planet Earth and end their lives. Suicidal satellites. Who would have thought? So what's the conclusion to all of this? Starlink satellites are not as bright as they are directly after launch. And decommissioned LEO orbit satellites don't stay in orbit forever, even if they don't have a deorbit method. And hobby astronomers, including me, We'll have to deal with satellite stripes and their pictures in the future much more often. So what do you think about Starlink's ability to ruin the night skies forever? Will we see more satellites than stars in the future? Or will the night sky even look nice with a slight glimmer effect? Discuss in the comments and share your thoughts. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like because that's what helps me the most. Also, hit me up on my Patreon page as this gives me the ability to spend more time on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time.